sitting with me and Rob, we have Mr. Wayne Garcia, hey. who looks rather fetching today, by oh, the way. Wayne, baby, with the tie. Purple tie and purple. Love yeah, the colors. Know, like, the, 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 the specs, yeah. the tie, it's that's kicking. how we roll around here. That is how we roll. That's how we roll around. <laughs> I mean, right. rolling, rolling. You know, All right. give us about 30 seconds what's going on with the cover story, and then I'm quite interested in, in, in your, your story. So can you talk about both? Yeah, well, uh, the cover was done by our um, pop culture critic out of our Atlanta paper, and uh, he has young daughters, uh, a young daughter One. at least, well, a young daughter, sorry, I'm giving him more children than he probably wants. <laughs> And, you know, I mean, he faces that, that problem that all parents face. What, you know, what do you, what do you let your kids see and do? And what do you try to force them? Because, you know, at four, it would be great to sit down and go, your daddy really loves this Bergman film, Seventh Seal. Let's watch it together. <laughs> but they're more interested in watching Barney. Is, is that good for them? And how do you, you know, how do you impose your cultural norms and things? And so he has the seven, the seven deadly sins of, of trying to keep your kids away from and, and bringing them to things that are good for them or things they're going to like and and when not to get in their way and when you know to let them enjoy being a princess if they're a little girl they, they want to be a princess let them be a princess sometimes you got to just let stuff like that or go. if they're a little boy i don't care i mean As you know, he even said the same guy. thing there you go you know but it's a great article it goes on for a couple of pages and i think go. people need to pick it up and read it because it's much too it's long informative, to go actually, into to be honest with yeah. you but i want to hear about ron yeah ron, ron, ron paul. paul well you Come know on. we've been doing all the presidential candidates and ron paul fascinated me because the guy literally polls in the national polls down somewhere between zero and a hyphen okay <laughs> i mean he's he's really, yeah ball. he's like you know when you have 10 republicans on the stage he's like the 10th guy who is that 10th guy but uh he, he's really interesting because every online poll after the debates he wins them by margins i'm not to, i mean the abc poll after the one republican debate that he won he got twenty five thousand online votes the next entry was a thousand votes and it wasn't even a candidate. It was the next entry was I'm not voting for any Republicans. And <laughs> then after that was Mitt Romney and Rudy Giuliani. So do you think it's a joke? No. Or do you, you think know, he rigged the internet somehow? No, like he, got some he, kind of he, thing? He did not rig the internet. What what's happened though is his fan base is almost entirely net net roots. Who it's don't go out and entirely, actually vote though, right? They're not frequent voters if ever a lot right. of the people i spoke to said i've never voted for a candidate but this guy turned me on because he has a really radically libertarian view of the world <laughs> wow. where there's no room for the federal government there's no room for us f intervening in foreign wars we shouldn't have been in iraq which you know, of course appeals to a lot of people right about now right now it's working um, but you know no social security no federal reserve system no irs uh, phase out medicare you know <laughs> get rid of all of these things he's anti federal. everything well it's 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 an old school constitutional state states rights um, that w that is sort of classically Jeffersonian Madisonian so there's a lot of people who feel like and and his his fans are devoted they've never been in politics they don't really quite know how to do it so they live all on the internet they have their meetup groups and they go out and they put up yard signs and do different things now can he translate that energy from from a, a, a small group of people on the internet that's magnified because not everybody after seeing the debates is going to go online and click the little survey they're not scientific those little online surveys no. there's nothing scientific about them but i would say out of all of the candidates i've looked at his fans are the most enthusiastic i i, I think the word would be more like rabid i mean they are yeah. so radical for, right they are so for this guy and and they would do anything for him you know whether he can translate that energy into a larger showing you know he doesn't have the money and the campaign mechanism to sort of do that maybe if he supported something he can get them to back him up and give well, him you know money. i mean he's one of those guys yeah, when you're supporting nothing it's kind of hard to. He, he's one of those guys who's against everything so you're never really wrong when you're against everything you know and that's earned him the name dr no in congress I mean, he's he's <laughs> You know he's anti uh, anti war, anti spending, anti government, anti taxes, anti you know the whole. The I need whole to range. look him oh, up and find out is, some more stuff about him because I'm sure well, like, go, he's partaking in our Medicare system and you know. If, this, well, ahead, it's funny because he's he's a baby doctor. He's a he's a seventy something year old grandfather who was a practicing OBGYN and you know knows that system. But if you hear him, he, he, his presentation on these debates is really really good. He's compelling because he has a very simple answer for everything. He doesn't say, "Well, solving healthcare is going to be tough." You know, the answer is we need to get government the hell out of the healthcare system and let you know, and then the insurance rates will go down. And he doesn't so, point at the problem and no, no, look no, no. and say, "Oh, that's a problem." He, he gives he, solutions he, he, for he things. Simple, that and the, and the solutions are 
very, very simplistic. Many people would argue unrealistic, um, but they're very simplistic say? and they uh, unrealistic. Okay. <laughs> so, but you know, but they they really appeal to some people who feel like God. We are all over the world doing all these crazy things and spending all of this money we can't afford. And also, really, I, I call them sort of the rugged individualists, people who think that folks should make it rise or fall on their own, not with the help of God, not affirmative action, not you know government propping you, but... you up. Well, in 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 tough times but. like we have now. Uh, we're still a relatively prosperous nation, but there's a lot of people who feel like, God, I'm being held behind because I got to pay these property taxes, or I got to pay this, or no, we're tell me about it. You're preaching to the choir, man. No, so uh, there's a there's an element of Ron Paul that appeals to just about everybody. Um, e- even if his entire platform is essentially, I want to run to be president to dismantle the government. I mean, so that seems sort of, well, you know, antithetical. If everybody is, you know, looks at him and goes, wow, that'd be great because we're struggling to pay our taxes and all that kind of stuff. What would we do during the weekend if we were just, you know, stuck to our own demise of trying to find something to do in Tampa Bay? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but Creative Loafing knows. But we could look in Creative Loafing to see. I don't think Ron Paul knows, but but I know. Actually, there's two great things coming up ne- next week, bef- and it'll start before we're back here. But it'll also run the whole time. Job Site Theater closes its season with Hurley yep. Burley. It's a great show. I'm oh, sure yeah. you'll have men. But the High Strong is coming to town. They are a garage band from Detroit. It's a trio. And their shtick is that they play a show, and then the next afternoon they play a public library. And this has gotten them on NPR's American Life series because oh, wow. they're this really funky. Their music is fantastic, and they're not real brainiacs, but they, they have this cross-country <laughs> tour. They do a late-night club show. So here it's Sunday night at New World Brewery in Ybor City. Sure. Cool. And then the next afternoon, Monday, August 6th at 2 p.m., they're at the Clearwater Library in downtown Clearwater. Uh, doing their thing, so we got a great picture of them. You know, there in the stacks of the books, but uh, yeah, it's a, a very, picture. very unique band, the High Strong. And, and so, get out at either place, you know, and see them. And there's so much other things that you can find to do in this week's Credit Loafing, but you need to go and pick it up and flip through the first five, six pages or so and find out what you wouldn't need to do. Wayne, thank you very much for great co- to be here. Very fetching very tonight. By the way, thank you nice, very much. Nice combo. 